the deal with Sylvia Roan. So what ended up uh, leading to you being shelved? Because uh, that was obviously a major label at the time. Atlantic was huge and it had a lot of artists. So what what led you guys in particular? Coming into the door, she was scared of us. Uh, from day one, the, the first day we got off the elevator, they was playing our music. And this was at the time where Ice-T was being banned and Two Live Crew was being banned. And the, our our subject matter was scary to them. That is one, one you know, us talking about snorting cocaine and all that, they was instantly afraid of us anyway. So she was talking about establishing a new label, a subsidiary, and launch our album as the first album on her new label. And when that didn't come to fruition, that's what shelved us. You know, she never had intentions of, of releasing us on Atlantic, the parent company. She wanted to, you know, do a subsidiary, smaller label and let the Dayton family launch that, you know, which could have been a beautiful thing for us um, had it happened. But she they, coming in the door, Atlantic was scared of us. It wasn't a place for our type of music. Atlantic wasn't ready for us. And what... Uh, as a person, how do you deal with that? Like someone signs you, but then they don't want to work with you. Like how how did that affect you? No, I don't. I don't think that it wasn't that. They, I didn't think that it was they didn't want to work with us. It was that they didn't know how to work with us. They didn't have a machine to to even deal with us, you know. And then we looked at it like fuck it. They paid us. I mean, you know, if you pay, you paid us. So if you don't want to do that with it, we are gonna go get paid again. So, you know, it really wasn't no big attitude thing for us. We didn't we didn't give a fuck. We didn't really care where it came out on. We was just happy that labels was calling us trying to do something. And were you able to take the were you able to get all your masters from all that stuff? Or did yeah, you have to yeah. for what's on my yeah, mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They let us go with everything. Wow. So, you know, that was a win-win for us. Yeah, get paid twice for one thing is a good thing. Right, exactly. So did that material end up being on What's On My Mind? Yeah, yep. That was the original, the album that we released, the What's On My Mind album we released uh, for Relativity was the album uh, Sylvia Rones and I'm signed. Wow. Now, speaking of the bass lines on What's On My Mind, one of my favorites is probably the I'm A G. That, oh, yeah. uh, doom, doom, doom. yeah, that yeah, bass line is crazy. That bass line got our ass whooped too. But go ahead. <laughs> well, break it down. What do you mean? Yeah, we now you know that was the you know that was the that was the 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 inspiration for the ass whooping on 79th and Hall said we had to endure, man. You know that whole that song created a whole mess, man, as far as in the game banging world. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. When we first dropped, man, you know, we came out with I'm a G, you know, we active, you know, and um it's no more active place for game banging than Chicago. So, you know. To get lured there was just, it was a lesson. You know, they say if it's not a blessing, it's a lesson. So 79th and Hall Street definitely was a lesson. And how how do you think you guys were able to, like, recover and that didn't derail you? Musically? Every way. <laughs> oh, wait, I mean, first off, we lived. And, uh, That's a good second, first step. Yeah, 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 man. And secondly, man, that shit was fuel for our fire, man. You know, back then, you know, um, you know, as young men, we felt invincible, man. So, you know, some shit like that happened. That shit was studio gas for us. That was liquid nitrogen. We went straight to the studio. That, that was an instant story for me. I had I, FBI album was complete. It was completely ready for release. That incident happened. We went back and added 79. That's why it's the first song on the album. The album was done. But we, I, I had, I, we got to stop it. We, I got to put this on the beginning of this. So that's how FBI, uh, I mean, 79th and Horsted came to uh, begin the FBI album. Hmm. Now with FBI too, because they're, that's the Dope Date and Av, the song, is that directly why you guys had that as the title of the second album? Or coincidence or what? The, the what's on my mind? No, uh, Dope Date and Av, the FBI song. No, uh, no, see, Dope Day Now, Dope Day Now was the first song we did. The yep. FBI song, the FBI song definitely was the reason because, you know, we played off the, you know, the, the, the you know, the FBI, you know, fuck being indicted. It was just too catchy not to do, you know. So once we did, we did the song because we were all facing indictments. So that's where the song come from. But after we got the song complete, it was the most strong, strongest title that we had out of all the records that we had did for FBI. 
okay. in my opinion. You know, being street guys, it automatically caught all of our attention. So we said, let's go with FBI. Okay. Now, before that, too, uh, getting on the Down South Hustlers, the yeah. with Master P, and it's the first song, the Stick and Move. First one, yeah. We always get the number one song. So how how did the connection with P happen, and how did you end up on that project in particular? See, back in the 90s, man, you had have, you have, um, lots of record stores, man. You had mom and pop record stores, and you know, everybody, you know, it was, it was dozens of um, stores that sold CDs and tapes, man, back in the 90s, man. And um, record labels would reach out to the store owners, you know, what's hot in this area, what's hot in this region. And they would call around that way. And that's the same way that major artists would get in touch with other artists through the mom and pop stores. So they, um, Master P reached out to Nick's Records and Tapes, an Italian record store that was in Flint, Italian guy in Flint. And uh, he plugged us, man. And then they went through Pole Broke Records and we already had the song done. The song was for our album. Um, it was for our album and um, we submitted that one because it was so rough. We knew that people want some South horror shit. So we submitted that and he instantly loved that one. And what <laughs> did you notice that was different getting on that compilation and getting on a project that had 8 and MJG and UGK and Ma Master P himself, C Murder? How did that uh, change how you guys were perceived or give different visibility or what? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, me and String always knew, man, we didn't really focus on who was on it because we knew that we was going to stand out no matter what artist was on it. We, that's just the way we felt our attitude was we going to make uh, our music is good enough and strong enough to compete with any other artist that's in the game, you know, and that's the way we always felt we treated it that way. So when um when we submitted that record, we knew it was strong enough. We knew people was gonna have some strong shit on there from the South. So when we did that, we said, okay, stick and move, that'll hang with anything. This hook right here is so fucking slick. It'll, it'll, it'll do what it needs to do, you know? So that's how we that's how we looked at it, you know. Okay. And with this and your visibility is increasing, but then the indictments and different things were happening. Do you think the visibility of the music hurt you guys? As far as the oh, law definitely, I mean, no, as far as legally, but the, the music definitely brought law enforcement attention because we were the shit we was talking. See, unlike a lot of groups, we were actually doing it. So, 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 so when we rapped about it, they like, whoa, whoa, what the fuck? These motherfuckers is actually doing this. They actually selling drugs and shit. They actually shooting at people. This shit is real. So once it, it became the music just brought law enforcement attention in the way, like, let's look into this. Is these motherfuckers just rapping or is they, is this actually a clique of motherfuckers doing this? And um, once they looked into it, they, oh no, we can't let this shit happen. These are the most popular motherfuckers in the city and they criminals. So that's kind of where it went. You know, we brought, we brought the music. A lot of the guys we associated with that sold drugs were low key. They, they were invisible. They were, they were on pictures and videos. Then when we came and they tried to make the transition to a legit lifestyle, they wasn't going to let them transition. Right. Law enforcement wasn't going to allow the transition to take place. Hmm. Yeah. So with, with backstabber and different things happening, like creatively business wise, how did that affect your relationship with relativity? How did you, you know, get in ghetto E in a group and all these different things? Like, how were you, yeah navigating yeah. all this stuff oh man we see it man we went we we just stepped out there and did it how it come we took it on the chin how it came so if it was a necessity if matt left we had to find somebody else to finance we got to do it if i get locked up ghetto e you got to step up we got to keep the train rolling no matter what the train got to keep rolling and that's the attitude we had well, nobody was more important than the next person if he gone you got to step up if, if something happened to him you got to step up and that's just the way we move, man. That's the way we looked at it. <clears throat> you know, nothing was pre-planned or, or we thought about it or discussed it. We just automatically instinctually knew that if something happened, you got to do what you got to do. That was just the way it was. It was like an unspoken thing, but we knew what roles we played, our positions were. We knew what, what, what positions we played. So uh, originally, and then as things evolved up to FBI, how would you say your role was at the beginning and then what it evolved into around this 96 era? Well, you know, in a, in a, in a, I always been on the front line, man. 
you know, uh, with everything from, from you know, the, to uh, creating the titles for the songs. You know, Stream was more upfront on, on creating a lot of the beats. Stream was a beat guy because he was involved with um, recording in the studio long before me. He had some years on me on um, recording in the studio, actually making songs. So, um, he, um, like I say, it was more of a do what you need to do, whatever you got to do to make it successful. If you got to do the hook on this one, you do it. If you got to rap first, you rap first. If, if you go second, it, it was always, we never totally agreed on everything, but we always found a way to keep moving, hmm. you know? And um, and that was, and then as, as time went on and we got older, like you said, towards the FBI record, everybody kind of like settled into their roles. We all, we knew what we had to do to make good music. So right. by that time, by that time, I didn't buck with string about the beats or picking the beats. I let them do that. Go ahead. That's you. Uh, we we early on we argued a lot about who rapped first, who went first, and who went second. As we got older, we kind of fell into you feel better going first, you know. So we grew into our roles. Hmm. Okay. And with the FBI album, the hand that rocks the cradles, one of my favorite beats on there. That one's mm -hmm. another somber one with pianos and different things. Mm -hmm. So, what about like the piano side of it? Because I feel your guys' music and a lot of great hard, harder rap has a lot of piano in it. So why do you think that works so well with hardcore subject matter? I, I believe, man, instruments are the voice of every song, man. I mean, you know, the the the, the, the pianos and the strings and, and that type of thing is what give you, what for me, it's, it's what gave me something to surf on. It's like I was surfing, I'm riding on the bass line, I'm riding on the pianos, that's my wave. And um, and um, and it also gave it energy. You know, when I hear a piano or organ or a bass, guitar, that shit was energy for me. It was like, oh, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta fight with this. This, you know, this is my weapon. That's what I felt like. That's what the piano made, felt like a weapon to me. The, the organs and the the more instruments it was in it, the more energy it got from me. Okay. <laughs> and then um, <clears throat> on the yeah on the FBI song, of course, there's organs on there. But I also thought it was interesting with the shoestring in particular, talking about waking up and, and you know having problems on his mind and all these different things. So for you guys, did because Dope Date and Nav EP and What's On My Mind, it was more aggressive. But with FBI, I noticed more of a paranoia, reflective kind of thing lyrically. Mm -hmm. So what was happening to you guys that kind of made that shift happen on the FBI album? Well, you know, like I uh, initially starting off, man, we came from nothing, zero. So you got to think we scrapping and scraping through what's on my mind, we scrapping. You know, this is out in the streets every day, knuckle busting, drug selling to finance everything. So we dealing with a lot of street shit through what's on my mind. We don't really understand the business at all through through through, through the making of the uh, early stages, what's on my mind and all that stuff. We was just make good music. Fuck the business. We don't give a fuck about the money. We got our own money. We don't fuck the industry money. We gonna just sell dope and just rap about the shit we live in and have fun. See, what's on my mind was fun for us. We was just doing living and rapping. That's what we were doing, living and rapping. FBI, life began to show itself to us more. Uh, you know, we didn't understand the way law enforcement moved and the way that they could be dirty, the way they was the way the system was was starting to reveal itself both the in music industry and the legal system was revealing itself to us and we was becoming aware that it was traps and it was it was it was things that we were overlooking in the process of having fun we was overlooking a lot of the traps and a lot of the, the shortcomings of the game so um as we begin to see those things that's why the fbi album may feel a little more mature than the F what's on my mind, the earlier stuff. And what what were you looking over music wise, music business wise, and in the streets? Like what was happening? I mean, you know, like in the music industry, man, you know, I, we weren't paying attention to paperwork or publishing rights or none of that shit, man. We just wanted to make good music. Our whole focus on music. 
I, I, you know, I, it was so many situations that I didn't even sign paperwork. Let's just do it. You know, I was that type of spontaneous. If, if, if it felt good to me, I lived my whole life kind of pretty much that way. If it felt good, let's do it. You know, fuck it. We'll worry about the paperwork shit later. If, it, if you fuck over me, I'll fuck you up in the streets. That's the way I felt. You know, I felt like, well, ain't nobody going to fuck over us. We us. You know, and uh, and and with the with far as uh, with the um, industry, with the with the streets, I mean, with the street stuff, we didn't realize how how snaky the streets could be and how clingy people could be till they use you up, till you dry it out. You know, people would cling to us, and we were surrounded by hundreds of people that didn't mean us no good. We were surrounded by snakes and scorpions and wolves and rattlesnakes and it was just all around us and we were just walking around it tiptoeing around it jumping over it and pushing it to the side you know and it, it really didn't start to bite us until we was able to see it maybe it was biting us but we didn't feel it that's maybe the best way i can put it but once we begin to feel the bites then we could oh fuck man let me get the fuck away from this shit you know